is being recorded. Very good. I'm just going to call it Our Lady Recording You. And facilitating the webinar with me will be Anna Yeager, who is also from Texas, the co-director of our Green Tech Initiative. We'll be featuring two presenters, Dave Morehouse from the Ella Baker Center and Matthew Bauer from Better World Telecom. And I will go ahead and let them start chatting. Um, for those of you who've raised your hands, you're welcome to put those hands down at this point. If you do have a question throughout the webinar that you don't need to chat through, you can raise your hand and one of the people monitoring the chat can follow up with you directly. So I'm going to pass it over to Anna Yeager to get started. Thank you. 
up. Yeah, mobile phones came up a lot in there as well. Blackberry, we see the lock. Great. Visual ID team, Google. Great. Thank you for the feedback. That's helpful for us to know what people are already using.
bridge to technology. And uh, that is where I want to go for next year. We, we simply have some of the models and some of the recent needs of, of each one of which to show what the, the categories are. We took a 25 person organization and, and modeled uh, different states. And uh, by, by just the slight numbers, um, I believe that there will be more contrast between the five and the 25 and the 20 and the 21 and say 31,000 pounds of CO2 uh, benefits and $37,000 to the organization <coughs> per year from just from flight and rescue and from travel uh, to places that we've never been as well. Sun Micro did this and came up with a method of doing it just in, in, in their own little study. Uh, half the workforce there is doing two days per week and basically it's just running uh, to, to reduce their work because that's the whole thing is that increasing productivity, reducing the amount of physical demand is not in the control all the time and then what happens when those conditions are changed and when uh, our physical demand is far more and we're far more prone to frost and summer. So inclusion is really a technical inclusion issue as much as it is a technical issue. Getting the folks to think a little bit differently about what is work and how do you work build and not have the collateral effects of those really are to spend more time in your communities and uh, uh, be more support supportive of content that has very little to no meaning to your colleagues. Um, promoting also another organization uh, very clearly is promoting more democratic change in family uh, workplaces. So it, it really does boil down to the, the, the great contrast of the organization and which one is the most win-win and the conclusion that we're uh, looking at a better strategic plan directly has an impact on the organization and the way it operates. So operational just uh, kind of like the, the, the greater cost of, of running the organization and the day to day and then capital commitments are just as important and so are uh, many, many different items in, in the budget and infrastructure. So on the operational side, things like rent and uh, uh, other, other cost of expenses and expenses that come up from them can be seen as better from, from a more open-ended concept, as well as um, equipment and, and going virtual PDL and things like that. So that we admit we need less equipment and things like that, but we try to just keep it as simple as possible. Thank you. And another uh, question I had is, uh, did your study include the cost of equipment and equipment costs that happen when you deliver a rescue mission? Did you consider that factor? Is that just side by side? PDFs are a, a system that we can model and, and set up costs and, and, and run them. And, uh, and, and yes, we did that on the, the, the study in, in much more detail than showing all of our assumptions and results and, uh, and we show that. Most of those cost savings come, don't come from, and this is what we're trying to get folks to think about. The, 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 the massive changes here are not just any more policy thing like right now I'm paying $5 for telecom and I'm paying like $4. It's my building is expense goes down, my heating, my cooling, my productivity goes up, my whole workforce and company is different. And these have all been shown in, in a large scale in a lot of the things that we've done here. Uh, but the impact on the rest of the organization is much, much different and the, the cost is much, much less. Can you describe the typical telecom problem for a company that cannot get rescue despite the limitations of physical time and equipment? Um, well, I'll, I'll focus on uh, at least the small to small mid, um, and, and uh, depending on the definition of medium and large company, but that's probably actually true of a large organization. Uh, small organizations often do not have someone on staff who really uh, attends to the day to day can be really burdened by traditional uh, phone systems that have a uh, have a heavier burden on them. So when something goes wrong, you have to depend on other people to be a party and to make things make sense. Uh, a lot of the, the solutions allow you to make things like that change 
affect a lot of a lot of different things from traditional systems and they are coming from a different point of view and they're coming from the perspective of a lot of different traditions and uh, the second part of that is that it then makes it difficult to really use uh, telecom or or IT in a in a in a proactive way to 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 make sure that you're you're being more efficient and efficient so but the problem people asked in the chat tool whether increasing telecommuting needs would counter the carbon production and use the individual. Um, and I know, I think Jim Lynch is also monitoring our chat and has responded a little bit, but it'd be great if you could talk about kind of what the difference is um, between having people in the office and transferring to the individual, as somebody implied in one of the chat questions, and whether that's true or or not true, or how, how that kind of impact changes? Well, the, all the studies that I mentioned earlier, and uh, there's probably a dozen or more now in the last five years, so we're talking about the United States, you know, by any year, uh, in terms of how much people drive and commute. Just imagine the movie effects. Uh, we could put up all the wind farms and solar fields and of that driving out of uh, the, the carbon production, that is, that is the, the impacts of that are, are huge versus offsetting it some other way. Uh, the the uh, building space production, the, the numbers that I quoted in the Sun, uh, the Sun Micro take into account all these types of different variables. And when you look at the average one,
um, for a couple of years now, and the direction in which we see the church is going is that we're not focusing so much about fitting a mold and fitting a church and following, and you know, that's a back of life thing, but that's the church is not a box, it's not a box, and we're plugged in there, and the church is just like any other house, it's not like we're the back of that church, it's just like the church is full of us, so instead of looking at them, we want to become like them, so then we thought about, okay, where does that, you know, how does that look in our life?
take us a while to really develop and kind of get that in there. And it really is just like like getting good and like a little piece of it. And even after we've done it a little bit, we're really just kind of like like in this other box of just like, okay, this is about it. And it's just like, I, what I share with them is just a little bit of that story of just what we're doing and how we're doing it. Almost all providers require a graphic design degree to do this kind of thing. At least in the Bay Area, I know it's not for everybody. Um, and it's just like kind of like the, I mean, getting the code for a developer is all kind of skill and progress. And you know, you want to kind of be pushing through and saying, I want to code for Bay, I want to code for San Francisco, and these are It's a whole new system. It's very like early and it's new. But you know, even the other thing was we didn't really build the build a little bit of the web front end stuff. We built the front end stuff though. Um, we didn't want to just build the front end front end and then kind of spend a bunch of money to do it. We want to actually like build the hard front end and stuff too. But there might be some cool stuff that comes out of that. Yeah, I think like something that for uh, getting rid of code blocks for Uh, how it kind of works is like you go if you're somebody out there and you're like hey can I do a very sketchy app that I can't possibly code how can I do the app that I built for you but I've never used it can you um, at least suggest some ways that you can do this and I guess that's like the the code blocking stuff um, but otherwise uh, please or if you're having a problem with anything that I said I'm just really glad to hear hear it and um, and feel free to let me know too so if you can find uh, We had um, a few folks ask about what the what you would approximate the cost to be of implementing and maintaining your voice at your organization. Do you have a, a an estimate or solid numbers on kind of what the overall cost was for you? Um, we we do run the numbers on what it would cost if we if we wanted to host it ourselves, or or the cost. The nice the nice thing about having the hosting cost on the web. phone system and then on our on our um, you know top end web um, okay. you know host server. We just talked we didn't run the numbers on what it would cost to have like this you know have the rip top phone system and you know we just kinda we, we look we look around and kinda decide what we think that would have the best cost for our for our system. Okay. I mean I think one person clarified a little bit and said what about the startup cost for the equipment? Or baseline cost versus after the transition cost. You say the month rate costs about a couple thousand dollars to keep it running. So I guess startup cost would be the other part of that. Um, you know, does it cost extra for all of the phones and transition and all of that? I think to get an idea, especially for smaller nonprofits who are looking at whether or not it's you know um, financially feasible to pay per phone. Great. 
there were a couple of other people who just wanted to know what um, operating system to use and I know you're on Windows now for this have you found any complications if you have people running multiple platforms um, in syncing these things up whether it's the VPN or the voice or any of the technologies we're talking about that you just mentioned
Spirit has been working in us through this and through this and through this. Um, and it's just really been great to see how God has been working in us through this and through this and through this. And I, I would say that um, if you look at down the road in our church, we have people raising their hands and saying, hey, can I be a part of this church? great. I think we're just about out of time here, so we're going to be wrapping up. And we have collected all of the questions that people have submitted. Hopefully, we were able to answer a lot of them. But if not, please um, post your follow-up questions in our emerging, emerging technology forum, in our community forums at the URL on the screen. Um, this will also be sent out along with the slides, the, rec the archived recording of this session, and other resources in, in the day this afternoon. So, Please look for that in your inbox. 
There are lots of resources available through TechSoup on these exact topics. So if you're looking to set up VoIP or trying to figure out what unified communications can work for you or blog um, or, um, you know, find a new phone system, there's lots of articles, there's lots of blog posts. You can find VPN systems and software in TechSoup Spark. You can join our community forums to continue that discussion and you can participate in other events like this one. We have a webinar coming up next week on Microsoft's donation program, so please feel free to register and join us for that. I'd like to thank our speakers for their participation, and um, thanks Anna, thanks Jim Lynch, Christopher Popkalov, and Tammy Griffith from HealthSoup who are helping, who've been helping to monitor the chat throughout this event. And I'd like to thank our webinar sponsor, ReadyTalk, it's made possible by ReadyTalk, which has donated the use of their system to help TechSoup expand awareness of technology to the nonprofit sector. ReadyTalk, ReadyTalk helps nonprofits and libraries in the U.S. and Canada reach geographically dispersed areas and increase collaboration through their audio conferencing and web conferencing services to achieve all just experience. So thank you, everybody, for joining us today. And like I said, you'll be receiving this follow-up information in an email shortly but the conversation will continue in our online forum, so please join us there. Thanks so much, and have a great day.